Hello everyone, this is Jason Gregerson, and welcome to the next video in your Calculus 2 video series. Today we're going to continue talking about Taylor and Maclaurin series. Now last time you learned how to take the definition of a Taylor series and apply it to find the Taylor series of a specific function. And that involved taking several derivatives and evaluating them at, at whatever our value of a was. In this video, we're going to learn how if we already know a Taylor series for a certain function, then we can generate the Taylor series for related functions. So let's take a look at some examples. All right, before actually applying this, however, we have to know several Taylor series. So this is a group of Maclaurin series, so a Taylor series centered at zero, that occur often enough that we need to have these guys memorized. So these are five Maclaurin series that you have to have memorized. So I would encourage you, if you haven't already memorized this group, to pause the video now and to write these down and then take some time later to commit them to memory. All right, what we're going to do with these series, though, is use them to find the Taylor series for related functions. For example, if we know that the series for e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus so on and so forth, then we can find the Taylor series for e to the 3x simply by replacing the x with 3x. It's the same substitution technique we used when we were talking about general power series. And we can use those same tools now for Taylor series. So the Taylor series for e to the 3x is going to be 1 plus 3x plus 3x quantity squared over 2 factorial. Don't forget to square both the 3 and the x. If you write this as 3x squared, that is incorrect because that's not squaring the 3 as well. The next term would be the quantity 3x cubed over 3 factorial plus the quantity 3x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus dot 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 dot. In fact, we can even write that in our summation notation using that same substitution idea. This is just 3x to the n over n factorial. All right, about something slightly more complicated, the next one has 2x e to the x squared. In this case, we're multiplying and doing substitution. So what we can do is just isolate that exponential piece, that e to the x squared, and then just use the series for e to the x with a substitution and generate the series for e to the x squared. And then we'll just multiply through that general series by our 2x. So in expanded form, we would just say this is 2x times the quantity, 1 plus, now I'm replacing x with x squared, in all of these pieces. Once again, be careful to make sure that we're treating our powers the correct way. Now I have x squared cubed, x squared cubed over 3 factorial plus dot 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 dot. And so then I can maybe just evaluate those powers, 1 plus x squared, raising powers to powers, I'm multiplying those exponents, so I get x to the 4th over 2 factorial, x to the 6th over 3 factorial, dot 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 dot. And then lastly, I'll just multiply through everything by 2x to get 2x plus 2x cubed, plus 2x to the fifth power over 2 factorial, 2x to the seventh power, 3 factorial, and from there I can really see my pattern developing. Similarly, I can use my summation notation and just write 2x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. And once again, I'm just replacing x by x squared, so x squared raised to the n over n factorial. But then I can use some power rules here. So for instance, I can say that x squared raised to the nth power, because the power raised to a power I'm multiplying, this would be raised to the 2n power. But also, I can pass this factor of 2x inside my summation, and so I can multiply this x to the 2n times x, which would give me x to the 2n plus 1. So I have 2 times x to the 2n plus 1 all over n factorial. I would strongly encourage you, once you write that expression in summation notation, it's always a good idea just to evaluate it a couple terms to make sure it lines up again with your expanded form. If I plugged in n equals 0, for instance, my first term would look like 2 times x raised to the first power divided by 1. And I just have 2x, which I can see is actually the first term I got when I did the expanded form. So I can kind of verify to see if my summation notation was correct. Okay, so this is the general process. Now, there's one more series we want to look at in a little more detail, and that's going to be our binomial series. 
So this is the last Maclaurin series on that list that you are going to need to memorize. But this is a little more complicated to apply, so I want to make sure that, uh, that we can use it. And we can also need to see that we can use it in a variety of ways. It looks like we should just have 1 plus x, that quantity raised to some power. So if I had 1 plus x quantity raised to the fifth power, I would just replace all the k's with the value 5, and I could write out that general series expression. However, what I want to recall is that I can represent other things with powers as well, like the square root of 1 plus x is really just 1 plus x raised to the 1 half power. And so now I can just replace all the values of k with 1 half. So what's this going to look like? It's going to look like 1 plus 1 half x plus 1 half, and then k minus 1 is going to be 1 half minus 1, which will be negative 1 half, all over 2 factorial x squared. Plus, now I'm going to have 1 half, and I subtract 1 from that to get negative 1 half. I subtract another 1, basically, when I take 1 half minus 2, it's the same thing as taking this expression and subtracting another one from it, to get negative 3 halves, all over 3 factorial x cubed. And really from here I can see that pattern extending. So I'll have 1 half, minus 1 half, negative 3 halves, subtract another one, negative 5 halves. So I could really keep going with this all over 4 factorial times x to the fourth, plus so on and so forth. And what we'll see is that some things we'll see patterns to. For instance, here I can see that the side of my series is eventually going to alternate because this term will give me a negative one, the next one will be positive and negative, and so on and so forth. However, the actual values of the coefficients aren't necessarily going to simplify into a nice pattern. They're just going to be whatever they're going to be. So if I simplify this, I would have 1 plus 1 half x minus, and then I would have 1 fourth divided by 2, so 1 eighth x squared. The next one's going to be a positive, and I'm going to have 3 eighths in the numerator divided by 6, so I'm going to have 3 40 eighths as my fraction, x to the third. The next one will be minus, and it's going to be another kind of complicated coefficient that I could calculate if we wanted to, whatever that value is, times x to the fourth, and then we'd have positive, so on and so forth. So here I can kind of see that I'm writing out um, this series. Let's look at the next one. The next one we just want to do the basic manipulation. The big idea is we need to rewrite this as 1 plus x squared raised to the negative 1 half power. And so now I see that it kind of fits this binomial series form. I'm just going to use k equals negative 1 half. And then I'm going to use a substitution where I'm letting x equal x squared. So this will look like 1 plus, well I got negative 1 half here, and then times x, but I'm replacing x with x squared, and then plus negative 1 half times negative 3 halves over 2 factorial, once again replacing x with x squared, so I have x squared quantity squared, and then I can kind of continue on with that process. Negative 1 half, and negative 3 halves, negative 5 halves, all over 3 factorial, and if I simplify this x squared square to get x to the fourth, I can see this one's going to be x squared cubed, or x to the sixth. And so now I can see that pattern continuing. And so this is how I'd find the series using that binomial series formula. Okay, let's quickly look back at that list of formula we need to memorize. So we have these big five series that you really need to have memorized. Now, a couple other comments I'm going to make about this is that there are other series that are also very important and are probably worth memorizing. And in fact, your textbook might list some of these other series. For instance, arctangent is a series that's very common. Another one is the natural log of 1 plus x. These are also other series that are commonly seen and commonly used, and you could say that it's valuable to have these memorized. But what I also want to stress is that these are related to your big five. For instance, if we know what the series for 1 over 1 minus x is, then we can use substitution to generate the series for 1 over 1 plus x. That's a pretty straightforward series to generate. But another substitution would easily get me to 1 over 1 plus x squared, so I can get to that series. And if I integrated that series, I should be able to get to the series for the arctangent. So it's really your decision whether you want to memorize that series for arctangent, or just know a few steps so that you can generate it. Same thing, if I know what the series for 1 over 1 plus x is, I could integrate that series and generate the series for the natural log 
of 1 plus x. So there are a couple other series that are very close to these series that you have to have memorized. And if you want, you can expand the amount that you want to memorize, or you can just be strong at the process of going from one series that you know to other related series. All right, so that concludes this video. Thanks for your time.